and welcome back to the Turdford Show. All right, so today's video actually comes to us is people are having a little bit of trouble understanding time of flight for things thrown up into the air. So let's make it really easy, give you a really easy go-to scenario. So let's say we've got a cliff here or something, and somebody's up on top of the cliff and they throw a ball or whatever it is, a rock straight up off the top of the cliff. And let's just go ahead and give us a number like, I don't know, let's go with 30. So I'm going to say that VO is equal to 30 meters per second. And see if I can actually make this thing work. That is a horrible looking 30 meters per second. But anyway, so let's also say that the building itself is, I don't know, let's say it's 20 meters tall. So objects thrown up off of a 20 meter structure, 30 meters per second into the air. What this problem is most likely going to ask is either the time to the top, the time for it to go up and like come right back to this same spot, or the time for it to go all the way down and strike the ground. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find this time first. If you've watched any of my videos, I'm going to tell you in these videos, what is my go-to equation for time? And my go-to equation for time is the second equation, VO T plus one half a t square. Now, if you're doing a projectile, the only thing different is I'd throw a little y on that. But other than that, it'd be the same. So let's do this first. One of the simplest things you can ever be asked is how long does it take to throw something up and catch it? I love that a problem. Because if you understand displacement y, then this problem is so sexy and sweet. No, I don't want to change my color schemes. If you throw an object up and catch it, how far has it traveled from where it left? Well, if you throw it up and catch it, it means it began and stopped in what? The exact same place. So what is the significance of y being zero in regards to the second equation? Oh, it's awesome. If y is zero, then check out the second equation. One half a t squared. If y is zero, that means this t cancels that square. So all you're left with is zero equals vo plus one half a t. And of course, now, depending on where you're at, your teacher may give you this for the second equation, vo t minus one half g t square. It is the same equation. I just leave this equation alone and know that for any object that's in free fall, I just use this. A is negative 9.8, and as long as you know that, then there is absolutely no need for you to be rewriting different equations. You're just using the same equation. So let's plug this in. 0 equals VO is 30. Half of, this is going to be half of negative 9.8, which is negative 4.9 T. Y'all, check this answer out. It's basically 30 divided by 5, so it's going to be 6. But for the sake of some of you, I'll go ahead and do this. 0.9 equals 6.12. So that means it takes 6.12 seconds for this object to go up to the top, stop, and then fall back down. That is what this function has told you. It takes six seconds to make this. So that's six seconds to go up and back to this original height. So how long does it take it to go up to the very top? <laughs> well, I love that question. Divided by two equals 3.06. That means to the top, it takes 3.0 seconds. Because it's going to take three seconds to go up and three seconds to go down. So if you know this time, time to the top is a very, very easy find. So now, I think this is where some people are getting confused. What about when you want to find time, not just for this, but you want to find time to go all the way up. And I'm going to have to erase some of this. So we had 30 meters per second. What about if it said time to go all the way up and then fall all the way back down? Well, first, yes, we know it takes six to do this. Don't try and, like, now start the problem over. 
that's just great. I love it. That took six. Now, watch this. This is a whole new problem. I don't need that anymore. So now my new problem is you find time. This is the problem. What is time for the object to be located at? Now, remember, everything here is a number line. What is the time for this to be located at negative 20 meters? Because if this is my zero point, this point is at negative 20 below it. So all I'm going to do is, what is my go-to equation for time, Mr. Cole? Oh, that's easy. It's that second equation. Love it. VOT plus one-half AT squared. And so now we can come back in here. Y is negative 20. VO is 30. T. And again, I'm not going to write one-half times negative 9.8. Half of negative 9.8 is negative 4.9 t squared. Now, unfortunately, when we go do this, this is a quadratic. But if you have a Casio FX Model 115 calculator, then hey, no fear. Quadratic mode beyond. So here we go. So there's two ways of doing a quadratic. 20, uh, first, I've got to actually solve for the quadratic. So I've got to set it up like that. Remember, A is your square variable. 30, that would be my B variable. And then that's my C variable here. So there's my quadratic. Now, there's two ways of doing this. One, you can remember the old song. X equals negative B plus or minus square root. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Now, I love that song. And the quadratic is handy. And you get your plus or minus answer. But here's the reality. I don't have time for that. That's why I bought the Casio FX Model 115. And the only song I have to remember is Mode 5-3, Mode 5-3. And now I'm in, I'm in quadratic mode. So my quadratic is negative 4.9 equals 30 equals and 20 equals equals... And it tells me that time is 6.73 seconds. Now, it will give me a second term, too, negative 0.6. But remember, there's no such thing as negative time. So all I'm looking at is this positive value that's in here. So, matter of fact, let's do some. Let's change my, if you don't know, mode 1 turns your Casio back to new. So look at this. That means... It took 6.73 seconds to go up and come all the way down to the ground. But if you remember a second ago, and I had erased, erased it, I think it took 6.12 seconds to get to here. So now if you were really curious, how long did it take to get between those two locations? Well, that's pretty easy. 6.73 minus 6.12. It took 0.61 seconds. For that little section here. But that's not what the problem wants. Matter of fact, get away from here. Somebody will think that means something. Remember, the equations are dumb. They only know what you tell them. This is a simple function. And when you plug in this value, it's going to give you the time from here. And it understands that that is the time from here. All the way up where it stops. And then all the way back down to here. Anyway, that is the easiest ways for time of flight. By the way, the same equation works in the projectile for time of flight. The only difference when you're doing a projectile is this. Use VOY for this number. So when you do a projectile, and the only difference on the projectile is going to be when you go to work the problem. Let's see if I can just fix this right here. Uh, it's not going to let me, is it? Ah, can't do it. Oh, well. Delete. I ask you to go. Go away. Leave me alone. The only difference is on the projectile, it'll be in an angle. And so if you've got, say, 30 degrees and you've got 20 meters per second, all you got to do to get your VOY is 20 sine 30, which is 10. And now if you're asked for time, you work it all the same way for a projectile. Nothing changes whatsoever. Anyway, peace out. Love you as always, and happy living in Turdford world. Bye now.